Awesome, Jazakallah. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I'm honored to be able to speak to you all today. So I'm going to start off with a, you know, little thought experiment. So you see this photo over here, right? I just want you to think in your head, like, what, is this, what does this photo make you think of? Is it, you know, is it inspiration? Is it just like, wow? Is it like, what, you know, who is this person? But just take a second, like, you know, what, what does this make you think? So when I saw this photo, there was a piece written on this lady. She's an Indian lady, and I, she struggled with some health conditions, and she's in India. And this is her son that was training her. And she developed this ability to, by the way, she's 68 years old. So she developed this ability to get over her um, you know, limiting beliefs and just be able to improve the quality of her life by incorporating resistance training, healthy habits. And I saw that and I was just inspired. And there was a whole article done I saw on social media, but I thought it was incredible. And it's, it's a testament to saying there's the biggest limiting belief we have is within ourselves. And it should be a reminder that, you know, uh, we can, it's never too late to incorporate uh, good habits. So I'm gonna spend roughly the next six to eight minutes talking about a holistic approach to health and fitness. And, you know, there's no doubt that most of us in these rooms have heard many times what we need to do to actually achieve our optimal health, you know, exercise, nutrition, you know, a community, all these things, but we're going we're gonna to put that all together, so. Okay, so what does it mean to incorporate holistic health? What is holistic health? So holistic means whole or complete, and when it comes to our health specifically, I think a few speakers in the morning session talked about this. This is mental, emotional, relational, spiritual, and physical health, you know, all, all wrapped into one. And in contrast, you might be wondering, what's a non-holistic approach to our health? And this is often uh, treating individual symptoms in isolation. This is often reactive. And that's certainly necessary, don't get me wrong, but you know, we wanna take it a step further. We wanna be proactive and emphasize future prevention and balance. So that's, that's the aim here. We wanna to touch on each of those different factors, okay? So I'm gonna talk about why do we care as different professionals? I apologize, the, the formatting is a little off. Uh, you know, it's, it's viewed in a different format, but why do we care as healthcare professionals? So our duty goes beyond just treating the symptoms, obviously, we, there are limitations in our practices, but we, what we can do in terms of, you know, promoting wellness to our clients, to, uh, to our patients, you know, to our friends, to our family, it starts from us. We set that example, and we want to make sure we lead from we lead from within. Now we take that a step further. Why do we care as Muslims? You know, we're here at this conference. We're all gathered here. And embracing holistic health is actually, it's not just a professional duty, it's actually a spiritual obligation, believe it or not. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a few different verses that emphasize this. So Islam emphasizes balance, moderation, and care for the self in a few different ways. So there's a ton of examples, but I'm going to illustrate a couple. So when it comes to eating, you know, this is completely aligned with modern day science and the practice of eating for sustenance to fuel our bodies and minds. Uh, chapter 7 Verse 32 says, O children of Adam, eat and drink, but be not excessive. Indeed, he likes not those who commit excess. There's another hadith even that says, you know, when talking about what it means to be a good Muslim and carrying that example like the Prophet Muhammad was, it says, a strong believer is better and dear to Allah than a weak believer, though in both there is good. And, you know, that, that strength and belief comes in all different aspects of our health to, to make us Whole and bring our best self forward. And now let's look at it from a science and longevity standpoint. Again, apologies for the uh, mishap in the formatting. But um, over here, what we want to talk about is that when it comes to nurturing every aspect of ourself, when we, when we look at a holistic approach, this gives us the best chance to present ourselves in this world in our most optimized self. If we're just focusing on our spiritual, if we're just focusing on our mental, if we're neglecting one or the other, we're not bringing our best package forward and we wanna really strive to, to have that. So there's no shortage of studies when it comes to how community, diet, exercise, focus on mental health, sense of purpose, all of these individually are gonna boost our lifespan and quality of life. But we wanna focus on maximizing each of these. And here's just three cases, there's hundreds if not thousands of different studies we've all seen. When it comes to community and sense of belonging, 
I think someone in the morning session also, also talked about this topic. Across almost 300 plus thousand participants studied across 150 different studies, the random effects weighted average was a 50% increased likelihood of survival for participants with stronger social relationships. So that shows the impact of community, Jamath, you know, these social circles we have is literally important to our, our health. And then obviously diet, we all, we all know this one, you know, with reviewing NIH literature, food is both the foundation and the scaffolding for the building and survival of an organism on a daily basis. And then when it comes to Adults up, you have one minute. When it comes to exercise, same thing here. I do want to close on one thing when it comes to an action plan. A lot of us have very good spiritual practices. We might pray, we might journal, this or that. But when it comes to, you know, exercise, I always say start small. Start with two days, you know, a week when it comes to uh, actually training. And what, when it comes down to is self-accountability. So if you write it down on your calendar, that starts with respecting yourself enough to do what you say you're going to do. Remember, your word is your bond. That is a self-reflection of true self-respect. If you can listen to your elders, your peers, your colleagues when something is due at work, you should owe it to yourself to have the respect to do what you say you're going to do. So always start small beyond anything else. Um, you know, we can chat after this for, for a full action plan to get through this. Um, but I'll leave you with that. And yeah, I, I appreciate everyone's time. The last thing I'll close with is kind of going off of that. If you can win for a day, you can win for a lifetime. I heard something recently that when we look at our gravestone, we have our birth date and our death date. And between that is a dash, right? So you want to live the dash. You want to live your best self in this period we're at now. And that comes from embracing our whole self, physical, mental, relational, spiritual. So Jazakallah and thank you.